Well, what a day to be here. Sunshine, complete contrast to that dreadful night. Do you remember? The waves were high, and but for, it was a, a lone policeman, I think, walking along, who recognised and could see the waves, and could see the beginning of the cliffs going, of the risk that people faced, those properties that then had to be evacuated immediately. And the community sprang into action. We came together. We sorted the children. We sorted toys for them. We sorted accommodation. It was truly remarkable. And what happened here was a real demonstration of community spirit. And we say thank you to the Orange Army, but the Orange Army aren't just the Orange Army. They're family. They are absolutely family, and they are absolutely with us and I'm so pleased that they are with us here today. Do you remember when we got those great big industrial um, containers? Nobody had ever done it before to stop the, the wall and stop the water coming in. That was an incredible idea, never been done before. And it worked, phenomenal. And do you remember the wave walker? That was phenomenal too, and it had the tourists here. And I think when people come now to Dawlish, it's not just because we're a great place to come for a holiday, but we've got history, we've got form, and we've got true community spirit. And that's really, really important. And I remember that Wednesday morning, I went to Mr. Speaker and I said, Mr. Speaker, I need, it's PMQ, I need to ask the government for the money. We have to find this war, we have to find the money. He said, yes, all good, gets credit for that. And credit then where credit's due, David Cameron, the Prime Minister of the day said, Anne-Marie, the government will do whatever it takes. And the government has done whatever it takes. So for me, it's a heartfelt thank you, not just to those of us who in officialdom, not just to the, the Orange Army, but to the community. Because you've lived with, actually, quite a lot of disruption over the years, and you haven't complained, and you have made the Orange Army and everybody else welcome. So today, I am so, so pleased to be here celebrating the opening of the Sea Wall. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And today, we deliver on that promise to Dawlish that Anne-Marie talked about. Um, Prime Ministers sometimes do make those sorts of promises, and then the £165 million cost of the promise gets cashed in, um, but that promise, as she said, was made in the aftermath of that 2014 storm that ripped through the then seawall and left the railway suspended in mid-air. And as we were coming in, uh, and I was in the cab, uh, I was shown the exact piece of railway that was the bit that was left hanging back in 2014. And it exposed the vulnerability of some of our coastal railway to the elements and resulted in most of Devon and Cornwall being disconnected from the rest of the network. And only because of the swift and brave response of 300 network rail engineers, uh, often in the face of terrible weather conditions, were we able to minimise the disruption and open the line eight weeks later. But that promise that Anne-Marie extracted from the then Prime Minister was clear, that we would build a more resilient railway uh, here in the South West and not allow people who live in this area and further afield to suffer that, suffer that level of disruption. So today I'm delighted to formally open, and after we've heard from these youngsters here, we'll do the formal unveiling, but formally open the second phase of the Seawall project, which is an £80 million investment that will boost the resilience and reliability of this railway for decades to come. A completely new pedestrian footbridge across the colonnades and an enhanced stilling basin at the mouth of Dawlish Water, which is part of that £165 million South West Rail Resilience Programme that is also going to see further protection delivered on the line further up. And while the wall offers 21st century protection and full accessibility, it rightly draws on the town's history with reclaimed stone from the old wall repurposed for benches and outlines of old seating areas still visible. But we should also acknowledge the feat of engineering that's brought us to this point. And local people will have seen the eight-legged wave walker 
an innovative self-contained barge which allowed engineers to work faster and during high tide, but also saved the project £6 million. And I'm delighted the seawalls already had a positive impact thanks to contractor Bam Nuttall's commitment to using local labour and materials, which has given the local economy a £15 million boost. And we've seen service delays along the line noticeably reduce since the wall was built. And that's really important to me when you're the Secretary of State for Transport. If there are delays to services, people tell you about them, whether it's directly from colleagues in Parliament or on social media. I quite frequently get social media messages about railway reliability, so a more reliable railway is really important to me. And it's taken, the final thing I want to say was just to thank the team that's made this a success. So Michelle and colleagues at Network Rail, the lead contractor, Bam Nuttall, and all of the team that have been involved, and I just heard many of them all the way through this project, and will continue to work on it through the next phases. Uh, Devon County Council, led by Andrea and her team, Teambridge District Council, and as I said, again, thanks to Anne-Marie, who's been this project's biggest champion, and those of you for whom she's your Member of Parliament, she is tenacious at raising her concerns in Parliament, whether on the floor of the House or in private. So all of that work means that that's why we're here today. So thank you for your support and patience to everybody that's listening and delivering a better and more, more resilient railway, one that will create more jobs, attract more investment and strengthen the economy for this community and in the wider region. So a really big thank you from me to all of you who have been able to make this take place. And just at that moment, a train goes past to demonstrate the point of this project. Thank you all very much. I think we're now going to hear from the team from the school uh, before we formally open the plaque. So, over to you. In Dawlish Town, the waves collide, there stands a wall, stairs the sky. Its stones embraced by salty air, guarding the tracks with utmost care. A guardian against the weather's might, protecting trains day and night. The trains may rumble, wheels on the track, passing by with a clickety clack. Dollar shield, a coastal crown, symbol of strength in a seaside town, a beacon of hope for all to see, the triumph comes where land meets sea. Very, very proud teacher there who's sorted them out. Another bit of fantastic teamwork from Westcliff Primary Academy, so well done. Right, this is the bit where it all goes horribly wrong. Hopefully, who's going to help me? Who wants to help me? Right, come you to this end. Right, we are going to formally open the seawall. Right, let's give it a tug. There we go. Well done. Bravo, everyone that's helped to make it happen.